Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. We're starting out with two card bases. I took an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, cut it in half down the middle at four and a quarter. And now on the 11 inch side, I'm scoring it at five and a half and folding it over. That's gonna give us two cards that are A2 sized, four and a quarter by five and a half. We're doing lots of layering today, so here is all the measurements that you can pause on to refer to later. But at the end of this video, at almost the at the 19 minute mark, I go over all the layers slowly because we do go through them rather quickly in the video. So if you want to reiterate the sizes or anything like that, skip to the end of the video or pause on the photo that I showed of all the measurements, and that goes over it all again. Here I'm pulling out some pattern paper. I'm using both Kaiser Crafts Treasured Moments and Pink Paisley's C'est La Vie. They're obviously two different paper collections, but they go together very nicely. They coordinate beautifully. So I'm pulling out four different pieces here, and the first two pieces I'm going to be cutting down to cover my card base. So I'm going to cut them to four and a quarter by five and a half. And this black and white roses piece right here, I accidentally cut down, but I didn't want that as my base piece, which is no big deal because I need it to be a smaller piece anyways. So I figured that out here in a moment and I cut it to the correct size. So here's where I realized I wanted this piece to go as my first map piece. So again, I'm cutting that quickly to four and a quarter by five and a half to cover my card base. In the end, you're going to see I actually make my cards a little bit larger than a standard A2 size card, which I will explain more of that in just a moment. So I'm just making sure those layer up nicely. And now I'm going to start cutting all my layers for the front of my card. The first one I'm going to be starting with is the glitter layer. So I'm cutting two pieces to three and an eighth by four and three eighths. I do end up adding a chipboard piece of the same size behind this mat which I show you here in a moment. So I'm cutting, I'll be cutting off screen two medium weight pieces of chipboard to go behind that piece. Now my second layer is a foil paper cut to three inches by four and a quarter. Again, cutting two of them. And now I'm going to be adding another matte piece of this beautiful pattern paper. They're cut to two and three quarters by four. And like I said, there's lots of layers on this card, so check at the end of the video if you need to reiterate the sizes. Here's another layer of the glitter paper, two and three eighths by three and five eighths, which I will be adding a foil piece to the top of that. These are cut to two and a quarter by three and a half. And my final layer is going to be my sentiment piece. I cut two pieces that I printed out from my printer. I cut them to two by three and a quarter and that beautiful sentiment is from the online silhouette store. Here's the chipboard pieces cut to three and an eighth by four and three eighths, slightly smaller. Those are gonna go behind my very first glitter mat piece. So here I'm just going to add all my layers on and you'll see me use both the ATG tape and my Fabri-Tac. The glitter and the foil paper, the backing on them have kind of a waxy finish. So I wanted to use some Fabri-Tac because I knew that would hold it down very well. And I love that the Fabri-Tac gives you a moment to kind of move it around, get it positioned where you want, but yet it dries rather quickly as well. So that black piece is my chipboard piece, which gives my card perfect dimension with all these layers. I love how this card turned out. Now I'm adding my pattern piece to the top of that and then another glitter foil, and then my final sentiment piece. And like I mentioned, my sentiment piece, it's a sentiment that was printed from my computer, purchased from the online silhouette store. And then I'm just going to layer all of those down and add that to my card base. I do the second one mostly off camera because it's the exact same thing that you see here, just me layering it down. But I'd like to explain, when I was done, I did not like the finish edge of it. I wanted one more glitter layer 
to the to my entire front of my card. So I considered cutting my cards down, but instead I had an idea to make them a little bit larger and give it a beautiful glitter layer, which I backed by chipboard because that way it gives it some stability. If I added just the glitter piece, it wouldn't be it would be too thin and wouldn't hold on very well. So I backed it with chipboard and then I added my entire front of my card to the chipboard. So here's what I'm showing you. I have the chipboard and the glitter piece cut to four and a half by five and three quarters. And I'm just going to add the front of my card to that entire piece. And then it will open like a normal card, but it'll be sitting on a base. I'm using the paper stack glitter, glam glitter I got that from Hobby Lobby. It's a gorgeous paper collection. And now I'm just using my Fabri-Tac to adhere my glitter piece onto my chipboard. And if you don't want that, if you want your card to be a regular A2 size card, you could, well, first of all, you could have just added the glitter layer in the beginning. But like I said, I was happy with how this turned out. And I like, I like larger cards at times too. Plus I will be hand delivering one of these cards I made in mind for a sweet lady that did something very nice for me and the other one I just wanted to make a second card so I had that on hand so I will be hand delivering this to her I don't have to worry about sending this through the mail so I added that entire piece I made sure that I didn't get any glue that's why I put that eraser in it to dry I wanted to make sure there was no glue seeping out which would shut my glue my card shut so I did that with both pieces and let those dry. Like I said, I was really happy with how that turned out and I love that it's on such a, a stable piece. So now to embellish my card, I'm using some gorgeous flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts. I'll be sure to link everything I use from them down in the description box. I hope you stop by and check them out. They always have some beautiful flowers. They're always adding stuff to the shop and they always have great prices, sales going on. So. I hope you stop by and check them out. I'll also make sure to list all this on my blog as well. You'll find links for everything down in the description box. So I, I layered up some of the foundation blooms in white and then also this really pretty mint color. Being that this card was black and white, I wanted to add a, a soft pop of color to it. So I chose this beautiful mint. And now I'm just kind of tucking some of the white leaves throughout. If they were a little too large, I just cut the end of them off and tuck them in so they're, they end up being the size that I want. They also sell different sizes of these leaves, larger or smaller. I'm using the smaller ones. Now I'm pulling out some of my Wild Orchid Craft embellishments. I end up going with the flat back pearls to add to the center of the flowers. And I also pulled out some open roses, the pink mist open roses to tuck throughout the card as well. So I pulled out some extra pearls because I figured I would probably use them on the second card as well, and I do. And to adhere all this down, I'm using my Aileen's Ultimate Glue Gun. I absolutely love this glue gun. I got it from Michael's using a coupon a long time ago. And when you first turn it on and it heats up, it does leak a little bit of glue. But after that, it does not leak at all. I can have it plugged in for six hours and it will not leak. So I'm just adding a cluster to the bottom right as well, using some more of those gorgeous foundation blooms. They come in a pack of 100 and they last forever. I love layering them to give them some dimension. And to the center of that, I added one of the open roses. I'm also layering some of the hydrangea blooms there, two of the white, and I believe I add a pink one to the top of that. Yeah, I added just one pink one to the top of that. So pretty. And then another flat back pearl to the center of that. And I'm using my heat tool to just get rid of any of the hot glue strings that like to stick, stick around, excuse me. They just kind of dissipate when they have heat on them. I'm finishing off my card with some white crystal drops, the Nouveau crystal drops. They are my favorite to add. 
If you haven't tried them, I would highly recommend them and maybe start out with the white ones because they tend to go with a lot. So this card, the pattern paper has some pink in it. So I decided to add some white and pink foundation blooms that I'm layering on top of each other. Again, with the hydrangea blooms, but I did it opposite. I, I did the pink and the white for the hydrangea. And again, tucking some of the leaves. I think the doing these cards in gold foil would be gorgeous also. Gold foil with gold glitter paper. I'll probably do that on another card. Layering some more of the foundation blooms on the bottom there. And then some more of the open roses in the pink. I'm just twisting the little green stems. You can either cut them off or sometimes I cut them off. Sometimes I just twist them and leave them on the flowers. Wild Orchid Crafts has lots of different sizes of pearls to choose from. They also have the small self adhesive pearls too if you would prefer to use those. So I was just looking at my card and realized that I forgot to adhere down those pearls. So I'm just quickly adhering those down. Again, getting rid of any of the hot glue strings and finishing it off with some more of the white crystal, Nouveau crystal drops. So here are the two finished cards. Again, they are dimensional, so I wanted to make some card boxes for them to go in. So I'm starting out with a white piece of cardstock cut to nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers punch board, scoring it at three and three quarters and four and one quarter. So I'm putting it in at the three and three quarter inch mark, scoring it, punching it, and then moving it over to four and a quarter punching it, scoring it. And I'm, then when you turn it, you don't need to look at the measurements again. Here I'm going to show you up close. There's going to be two score marks. So just line up that like you would a, an envelope. If you've used this before and you know how to make the envelope, we're just doing two score marks instead, instead of just one. So I'm marking or lining it up with that first score mark, punching it, scoring it, moving it over to line it up with the second score mark, punching it and scoring it. Very simple. It's just like you make an envelope. We're just adding some more score marks to it and another punch. I'm rounding out my corners. And now I'm going to cut off on one end those tabs. So you want to do them the, the same adjacent end. So I'm cutting off both the tabs. That's going to be the top of our envelope box. Make sure you have a clean edge there and just cut those tabs right off. Now on the bottom end, you want to just cut it, but not cut it all the way off. Just put a slit through one of the lines and we're going to fold that in when we fold the box. And that's going to give us a nice finish to the bottom of our box. That's going to be the bottom. So I'm using my bow and folder going over all the score marks, making sure I have a good crease. And now we're going to glue this down. I'm using some, these are some chipboard pieces that I had in my stash. Um, they're actually just coasters. And that's gonna give me a nice hard mat to press down my envelope. I'm using my Fabri-Tac and only gluing one side at a time, making sure it's squared up, it's lined up perfectly. And again, that those chipboard pieces in there just give it a nice hard place for me to push down and really make sure it's adhered well. So now that that has dried a minute, I'm moving it over to the right hand side and doing the right side. I 
I will let that dry for a little bit. And now to embellish the front cover, I'm pulling out the same C'est La Vie from Pink Paisley and I cut a few layers for this. I cut this beautiful mint piece uh, for my base layer. That's six by four and three eighths. A chipboard piece, four and three quarters by three. That's gonna go under this glitter paper that's four and seven eighths by three and a quarter. My foil piece, four and three quarters by three and an eighth and my sentiment piece four and five eighths by three inches. Again, you can pause on any of those measurements if, if you wanna recreate this card. And now I'm very quickly just going to layer all of these down. This was very simple to do. Chipboard piece because I wanted to give it some dimension. Layered it just like I did the card with a tiny bit of the glitter showing and then the foil and then this beautiful sentiment again from the online silhouette store. And then I will add that to the front of the box. And now to embellish it, I'm using some off-white chrysanthemums. I'm adding two of those at the bottom right. And then I'm going to tuck some of the same leaves that I used on the card. I wanted it to somewhat match the card. The other envelope I designed off camera, I just simply cut out a from a label die and I added the lady's name to it, which I'll show you here in a moment, but I ended up adding another piece of paper over it, which you'll see what I'm talking about because I decided to give her this one instead. So I'm adding a Hellborn flower and one of the baby pink and white wild roses. Those are some of my favorites adding some more of the leaves and now I'm going to finish it off with some of these beautiful pink hip rosebuds. These are great filler flowers. Just tucking those in both the top left and the bottom right. The entire time I still have that those chipboard pieces inside, which is making it strong for me to be able to push down and hold everything in there. So here I'm just showing you how it matches nicely with this card and how it fits beautifully. I will take it out because and add the um, chipboard pieces back in because I do want to add some of the Nouveau Crystal Drops. And again, I will let that dry overnight. Here's the other envelope that fits the card and I wrap some beautiful white satin ribbon around it and the lady's name to the front. But in the end, like I had mentioned, I decided to give her the other one instead. So I simply cover that up with another beautiful sentiment piece. Just, I'm squeezing off some of my Nouveau drops on a scrap piece of paper to make sure if there's any air bubbles in there that they don't squirt out onto my project. Adding a few of those around. And here's an up close view of that. I'll also have some detailed photos here and over on my blog. And I will let that dry overnight. So here's where I changed my mind. I added a mat and I made it slightly smaller so you could still see that beautiful outside paper. And then that's ready to go for someone else. For the other card, I'm adding a sentiment to the inside. I printed out her name and to and from basically added my sentiment and then I'll just use my ATG to adhere that down to the center of the card and then it's ready to go. So here is the finished card with the envelope and now to go over all the measurements. My very first piece is going to be my chipboard piece. It is four and a half by five and three quarters. That's going to be the very base of my card. I'm going to layer on top of that a glitter piece of paper that is four and a half by five and three quarters. And if you remember, my entire card base sits on top of these two pieces. So again, I'm adding the glitter paper on top of the chipboard. The next piece is going to be my card base. It's an 11 by four and a quarter inch piece of paper. 
scored at five and a half to give me an A2 sized card. And it's gonna be a top folding card. I'm using a heavyweight cardstock because there are lots of layers. That's scored in half there, and now we're gonna add that right to the center of that glitter piece of paper. My next layer is my pattern paper. It's cut to the exact same size as the front of my card base, four and a quarter by five and a half. It's gonna cover the entire white piece or whatever base piece your card base is in. The next layer is going to be the chipboard that's gonna lay underneath our glitter paper. So this chipboard is three and an eighth by four and three eighths. I did make it a hair smaller so you couldn't see it under the glitter paper. So we're gonna layer that down for dimension. If you don't want dimension, you don't have to add that. And now this is going to be the glitter piece that's gonna lay on top of the chipboard. It's three and one eighth by four and three eighths. Now we're going to add the foil piece on top of that as a mat, cut to three by four and a quarter. And that's gonna give us just a, a nice matting. And now we're gonna add another piece of pattern paper, cut to two and three quarters by four. Our next mat is gonna be another glitter mat piece, cut to two and three eighths by five, excuse me, by three and five eighths. To the top of that, we're gonna add another foil mat. Cut to two and a quarter by three and a half. And then our last mat is going to be our sentiment piece. It's gonna be a pattern paper with a sentiment on it that's cut to two by three and a quarter. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really hope you've enjoyed today's project and stop by Wild Orchid Crafts, check out all their amazing products. Have a great day. Thank you.